Hi, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. It's been a long while, in fact. Uh, I don't even remember when I made a video last, so... Yeah, but welcome back, anyway. Uh, in this video, I will uh, share my experience and experiences from my uh, trip out on a boat on a tuna safari. I'll give you some background about the fish, about the gear I used, and about the experience uh, as so, and show you some images and some video in the middle, and then in the end. I will discuss my experience and then um, boiler alert you right away. Uh, I'm going out next year. This is fun. I live I live in Denmark near Elsinore. Uh, in the last uh, two or three years, the tuna has uh, been coming back to uh, to the um, the ocean between Denmark and Sweden. Uh, actually, for 55 years ago, there was a large, of, you could say, an adventure of uh, a lot of tuna being caught here uh, for commercial um, use, and um, that. They kind of disappeared uh, due to maybe overfishing, maybe just uh, something to do with the climate. Uh, I don't know exactly, uh, nobody really knows, but there's maybe a combination of all these reasons. Uh, and there was not enough food for them, so they, they disappeared and went back to where they came from, um, which is uh, the, uh, as I remember, the western part of the Mediterranean Sea. And that's also where these fish come from. It's in fact the um, bluefin tuna or the Atlantic tuna, it's also called. They come down from, from the Mediterranean where they, they breed and, and, and live, you could say. Uh, then they travel around to, to eat and they come here to eat uh, different fishes um, in the sea here. And there's a lot of that now again. The tuna can be found here uh, from late June uh, and then all the way maybe into October, depending on the weather, depending on the fish they are hunting. They're hunting for herring, for horned fish and for mackerel. Uh, and those fish are in fact growing in numbers now, so there's a lot of food for the tuna to, uh, to come here for. And then when they start to disappear, go to maybe go to, to warmer countries or whatever they do, uh, warmer seas that is, they don't go inland, I don't think so. Um, then the tuna just goes back to the Mediterranean uh, and, and do their eating there and also, as I mentioned, do their breeding. I originally switched from uh, Nikon to, uh, to Fuji gear and um, I know that there's a learning curve the autofocus, uh, autofocus and the um, menu system and so on is a, a little bit different in the, uh, in the Fuji system than what I'm used to. Uh, so it's not that intuitive for me now. Um, so I was quite excited to see how it worked. Uh, I couldn't really decide what to bring, so, um, but I ended up deciding that I don't want to miss a moment because I was changing lenses. Uh, instead, I took a chance and said I'm only going to bring my 100 to 400, which in, in uh, full frame terms is 150 to 600, which should give me some reach, but maybe if the fish came close to me, I wouldn't stand a chance. But I, need, I think I, I needed to take that chance. Um, so I packed my XT5 and my 100 to 400 panel lens. Uh, nothing else. Uh, some uh, spare batteries, spare uh, memory cards, and uh, and some cleaning equipment, but nothing much uh, besides that. There's a picture of this uh, right here. So with that gear, uh, me and my wife went uh, on uh, this ship. It's normally as it's it's, it's a ferry, but without cars. Uh, it travels from uh, Denmark to Sweden, uh, but they've decided now that these tuna are here and then arrange these safaris where you can go out. I think it's for about one and a half or two hours. Uh, well, I think we were out for two and a half hours or something. Um, I showed you the video of the trip and, uh, and I won't be talking, uh, you can have some music.
So, what have I learned from this? Well, uh, I was a bit worried, as I mentioned, uh, about gear, but I found out that the widest I needed was 125. I don't think I was any wider than that, so uh, that was quite uh, quite uh, suitable for the trip. So you can see that the gear was all right, but the photography skills were not. Uh, I was mostly about one two thousandths of a second at about f6.3, I think which gave me enough uh, depth of field to get stuff in focus. I was on uh, used to stabilization full time, uh, so it was easier to me to catch both the birds than the fish and uh, boats and stuff on land and so on. And actually it worked quite good, despite that the ship were moving, but there were no, there were no problems with that. And if you can see, if you see the, um, the video clips are not terribly unstable, uh, they're not perfect, but yeah. Uh, it's a boat moving and it, uh, these boats actually sail quite fast. Uh, but the photographer skills came... I, I questioned this because I didn't have the courage to really zoom in, as you can see. So you saw the uh, images, uh, the pictures of the fish, where I'm, I showed the zoom and all the cropped in um, uh, pictures. I wish I had, I've had the courage to just go ahead and zoom closer, zoom in closer perhaps. Um, but that comes with, with experience and um, I think um, maybe next year this will be better. Um, last thing about settings is that um, I was at continuous low. I might have gotten a few more shots uh, and also a few more shots in focus if I've used the continuous high. Uh, I don't know. but. I was afraid that I was going to need to change memory cards in the middle of all the action, which were not present. There was not so much action, but you never know. Um, I, I didn't expect to meet, uh, to see something out there. I didn't uh, expect to see a uh, fish um, at all, uh, but we were lucky. Maybe one tuna, um, uh, but yeah, that's just what happens uh, when you're out there um, you get in doubt and then you go with a, with a well I shot like safety shots you could say so uh, I was afraid to fill the memory cards too quickly so maybe next time later that day I was on Facebook and I saw some someone in fact um, photographed a large whale uh, jumping out of the water and this was in fact a whale um, it's called a nape whale in Danish I'll just put it up here what it is it's in English I don't remember right now but and I don't even know um, but <laughs> I'll put it up there and you can see see what what, uh, what it's called so this trip was uh, a success um, you saw the big uh, the rib boat uh, the rubber boat you could you might say uh, which is from the um, uh, aquarium up here uh, I might go out on one of these next year because I'm not I'm not much of a sailor uh, in fact I used to be quite sick but I didn't that ship didn't I didn't mind sailing so maybe this issue has passed as I'm half grown older and um, I might have the courage to take the rip boat next year because I think they can get closer uh, to whatever is out there uh, the big ship is uh, noisy and it's big and maybe it scares the fish uh, whatever kind they are um, and maybe the rich Brit rip boats from the aquarium can get um, closer so I might do that I might have the courage to do that but on the other hand I don't want to go out there and pay a lot of money and then throw up or the yeah I don't know <laughs> I'm gonna have to see about that but uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video mainly about uh, fish but also a little bit about Fuji and uh, I'll see you in the next one whenever that is thanks for watching